own first. So you can make a whole bunch of mistakes and say, say things that you don't ever want to say again. So when things come out of your mouth that are weird or odd, it happens in private. You're the least inhibited when you're by yourself. Close the door to your office. Practice when you're walking your dog. Practice in the car. Practice when you're by yourself. I practice sometimes when I'm cooking and no one else is in the kitchen and I, I can just say a few things. So practice alone first to get the dumb stuff out, to just get the juices flowing. Let me say also, if you were an athlete, and you had to practice for a huge football game, or if you're a musician and you had to practice for a concert, you would practice for hours at a time. You don't have time, right? You have to fit practice in the, the sort of nooks and crannies of your life, which is why we say practice in the car, practice while you're walking your dog, practice in those moments of privacy that you have that available to you. And you'll be surprised at how fast the time goes. So if you're stuck in traffic, look at the clock and say, for 10 minutes, I'm just going to work on the theme for that closing. What's it going to be? You'll be surprised at how fast 10 minutes go. And that's really productive practice. So you can fit it in in really short spaces. Close your office door for 15 minutes. But get some alone time. And say it out loud. That's the other thing. It's got to be allowed. It's hard to imagine everything, or, although we're going to talk about that later. We're going to ask Pete how he visualizes as a ski racer, and he's going to share visualization with us, which is a way to practice. However, if you can get your lips, teeth, and tongue engaged and make the words come out in the talking mode, you've been writing about the case. You've had to file all kinds of briefs. You write all the time. But now that your task is to talk, start talking. And start talking as soon as you can, sooner than you may think. In trial skills programs at NIDA, we often say, stop writing about this case tonight. Don't write anything else. You're not submitting anything written to us in this whole program. Start talking out loud so you hear it and it get some muscle memory for the topics and all the names and what you want to say. So it just trips off your tongue, as our friend Hamlet would have said. A lot. Of course, if you're a professional athlete, somebody forces you to practice for hours. Somebody's forcing you to practice in another way for hours in your life. How do you fit in the drill just simply often? If you've got a couple of hours, great but you probably don't have them. A, a, a bunch of five-minute practice sessions are just as productive as an hour. So you can practice in these small spurts. Now, it doesn't all have to be alone. If you've got colleagues who want to listen, if you've got a chance to do a moot court, do it. In that formal situation, you'll learn things about yourself that are different from the stuff you'll learn when your door is closed to your office. If you've got those chances, if your family's willing to listen, great, go for it, especially if it's in short segments. So alone, aloud, a lot, as much as you can, and because you're really busy, you're not going to get through a whole opening, for example. You're not going to have time to do as much practice as you'd like to do, so practice the beginning and practice the end. What's your theme? Come up with some great theme. Practice for the theme, and that spawns a bunch of ideas for the middle. If you are confident that you, when you stand up and open up that first gesture, that you know what's going to come out of your mouth, you may have memorized the first couple of sentences, even though we usually say, don't memorize, be spontaneous. It's OK to remember the first few sentences. So practice your beginnings and the endings. Make sure that you know what you want to ask for, how you want to end, what the last question should be. Don't be tempted to ask one question too many. Know how you want to end in any given presentation, especially if you find out you've got to give closings earlier and you don't get a whole night to think about it and you're 
By the way, you've only got 30 minutes, counselor. If you know what you want the end to be and the beginning, the middle does tend to take care of itself. That's when you've, you've launched yourself, you're on a roll, and if you know where you're